Women of Reddit. What's one thing every girl should know but is rarely taught? Only thing I can think of that I haven't seen mentioned is that cold water is better at getting out blood than hot water. It is not okay for period pains to be so bad that you're incapacitated. It's not normal to be stuck in bed for two days or more every single month. Cramps are normal. Pain is not. Don't suffer in silence. It could be a myriad of things that you can get help for. For instance. 1 in 10 women have endometriosis and it is a horrific disease that gets brushed off as period pains when you need help. See your GP. Nurse anyone. If you suspect for a second it isn't normal. Go see someone. In the UK on average it takes up to 7 years for a diagnosis due to misinformation. What to expect when you go to the gynecologist? I swear they just took me there when I was 13 for what they said was a checkup. Someone seriously needs to walk you through what's going to happen. Edit. Since people are asking why a 13 year old would be taken to a gyno. I had taken some antibiotics a few weeks before that had killed off the normal flora. Because antibiotic don't just kill bad bacteria. But also good bacteria. I had mentioned to her that it was itchy down there. Yeast infection caused by antibiotics is extremely common. That prolonged wearing of pointed closed toe heels often cause bunions. I'm not sure how often this is taught. But I don't often see it mentioned. As a heel wearer in my 20s. I decided to stick with open toe styles as soon as I found this out. I imagine regular rounded pumps might not be so bad. It's possible to be allergic to condoms and or semen. If you're experiencing pain during or after intercourse. Look into whether you have a latex or cum allergy. Obviously this depends on contraceptive use. Took me why a too long to realize this. You really don't need to hover over the toilet. It's okay to sit. If you must hover. Wipe up your pee off the seat. Ugh. If you wear see-through clothing like a white blouse and don't want your bra to show. Wear a skin color bra that matches your skin tone. How to change a tire. My grandfather taught all of us granddaughters to so we wouldn't get stranded on the highway. Also. How to use jumper cables. I know a surprising number of grown ass adults who can't jump a dead battery without coaching. The reason why celebs always look perfect in their clothing is because they get it professionally tailored. It's not because you're too thin fat for the clothes in the shops. But because you probably don't get your clothes altered. That movie stars and the like are wearing a lot of makeup to look so fantastic. Maybe this should be obvious. I always knew they were wearing makeup. What I didn't realize was how much. And how big of a difference it makes when a professional makeup artist prepares a star versus a girl whose mom never taught her how to put on makeup trying online tips. I honestly didn't even realize what makeup could do until I saw a boy make himself look like Kim Kardashian with just makeup. A few months ago. I honestly thought for the longest time that most of the actors. Musicians and models were naturally and effortlessly beautiful. Wipe from front to back for fcks sake. Practical advice. Know how to shut off the mains water and gas supply in case something happens. Know how your car works. And what is needed to service it. I knew a girl I went to uni with who didn't know that she had to check the oil and water levels in order to stop the engine from blowing up, which it did. Just general DIY. Google and YouTube are a big help. Dads and male mums and female relatives should encourage young women to look after themselves. There are easier forms of birth control other than the pill. The patch is my favorite. Only have to use it once a week and forget. They also make female condoms. Also don't be shy about getting your bra size. The store people don't care. And your body will thank you. Also invest in a handheld shower head. Nothing better than the ultra freshness of a clean front and bottom. Also don't be shy about getting your bra size. Shout out to RA bra that fits. I recently calculated my size using the calculator they have and went from wearing 36DD to 36FF. Guess what? My boobs stay where they should. 5 stroke 7. Would recommend. 
Don't use lube with glycerine in it. Nobody ever taught me this and I used to have constant duties. Switched to a glycerine free lube and I haven't had one since. Doctors are gonna immediately recommend birth control pills the minute they find out that you are sexually active. Please do your research before choosing which kind of birth control method, pills, condoms, etc. Comma you want. I was on BC pills for about 9 years before I realized that they might be the cause of my high anxiety blood pressure issues. BC pills weren't right for me. Find out what will work best for you. A hard on does not equals a heart on. Don't emsturb it with objects that aren't made for emsturbation. Put a condom on it. And clean your toys before and after use. Just as boys should learn how periods work, yeah. It can get gross and achy. But nothing to be afraid of. Girls should have a better understanding of how erections really work. Erections happen long before puberty does it happens to infant boys all the time. Erections are not always sexual in nature. It can be comparable to goosebumps. You feel a draft and suddenly your skin is bumpy. They can happen for seemingly no reason at all. Some boys can't concentrate. Some might even feel like freaks. However, this process is normal and part of physically maturing into an adult. Just as it is wrong to make assumptions about a girl's arousal and make them to do something they don't want to do. It's equally bad to do that to a boy. Puberty is gross and weird and awkward for everyone. Please be kinder to each other. I've posted this before. If you are wearing white pants or a shirt, don't wear white bras or underwear. Wear something more close to your skin tone. People tend to think that if you wear white under white, it cancels itself out. But it doesn't. It does the opposite. It highlights. Also female clothing is super sheer so it's even more obvious. So if you care about your undergarments showing, don't wear white underwear. How to turn a guy down without saying you have a boyfriend or pretending not to speak English. Shut a few can cock holster and shag off M8. If you're in an abusive relationship with a man, you should go with a form of birth control that cannot be altered with or let them know about it. Depo shots can really help a woman out here. Ideally, the best solution is to leave. But if they can't do that for whatever reason, she needs to be covered in terms of birth control. And also, leave. And do so safely. Have a go bag packed and hidden somewhere safe. No man is better than the wrong man. Don't pretend to be dumb. Any guy worth being with will want to be with a smart girl. Strapless bras are a lie. It's okay to say no or to take up space. Not to tolerate unwanted contact or touching. But also, if you are sexually harassed, assaulted or raped, to know that it is not your fault. And it's not shameful to you. It doesn't make you less pure. Not that I think before purity is relevant. No matter what others say. You are not weak or SLTTY. You had a bad thing happen to you. You are still a good person. It's the perpetrator who is bad and weak. I would teach this to boys too. Being assaulted does not make you less of a man. This thread is depressing as hell. It paints a woman's experience through life as a series of avoiding men's and wanted advances. Dealing with Vegina issues. How to not feel insecure because celebrities seem perfect. And how to handle life after rape. Ladies. If you're going out on a date. Make sure someone you're close to. Whether it be a parent or friend. Knows the name of the person you're going out with and the address of where you'll be. For obvious reasons. Source. I casually dated a dude who murdered someone. That erring on the side of preserving our physical safety is more important than someone's opinion. It's amazing how many of us won't uphold our own boundaries or will let our initial no be discounted because we don't want someone unimportant to think we're a being a bitch. Don't waste your precious time. Your love. Your mental well-being on someone because you think they will change. Nothing. And I mean nothing. You do will change someone. A person will only change by themselves.
You can offer love and support to friends. Crushes and partners but unless they want to change they will not. An ultimatum will not change them. Marriage will not change them. A baby will not change them. Nothing will. So if it's not something you can live with. Get out. Edit. Just to be clear I'm not saying that people will not cannot change. They do. I'm saying that you cannot change someone else. They have to decide to make a change in themselves. You don't have to have children if you do not want to. If you want children. Great. If you don't want kids. Great. The decision is yours. When brushing your tangled hair. Brush from the bottom up. I did not know this. I learned this like a year ago from a doll's hair care guide. The last person you should ever compare yourself to is a celebrity. They have the ability to spend thousands of dollars a month on the most perfect healthy. Organic food and diet and workout plans. And have access to the most high end personal trainers. You are doing just fine. Make your goals realistic and don't get bummed out if you aren't progressing as fast as someone else. Sewing. Simple straight hem. Mend. And button replacement. Nothing fancy. But you'll save yourself money and heartache. Plus. If you're short. You'll always be able to get the pants you want. Vaginismus is a very real thing. Pain during sx is not normal. If you ever get raped your vagina will lubricate to save itself from harm. It doesn't mean that you want it or anything that stupid. It is still not your fault. You should not feel ashamed over the fact that you got wet. That it's okay to make a fuss about sexual harassment and assault. It's never something you just have to put up with silently. I think of all the stuff that guys did to me that made me really uncomfortable as a teenager. Guys in shop class running their hands up my shirt when the teacher walked out the room. A guy that wouldn't stop hitting on me and playing with my hair for the duration of a 15 hour flight when I was an unaccompanied minor. At the time. I had no idea I had a right not to be treated like that. I thought it was the price I had to pay for being a woman. That these things happened and I had to put up with it. So yes. You can make a fuss. You can tell the teacher. You can ask to move seats. You don't have to be made uncomfortable. Menstrual cups are a wonderful alternative to pads and tampons. That will save you a lot of money. No more rushing to the bathroom in the 3 minutes between classes to change a pad tampon. No more spending $10 plus a month on period supplies. Basic financial management. Be involved with managing your finances. Too many times I see divorced or widowed women with no idea as their partners always handled it. They should learn that you don't have to be polite to creepy men. And also you don't have to laugh at guys if they're being offensive rather than funny. Take no shti. Everyone's vajayj is different. Different lips. Different smells. Different discharge. Some are flappy. Some neat. Some smell sweet. Some smell earthy. Some people don't have any discharge. Some have lots, and some discharge is super acidic and rex colored panties. Dot. Don't be embarrassed of your bajingo. Embrace her, but dear god keep her clean. It's okay to not go along with the crowd or some guy you're interested in. You can say I don't like or that's not for me and everything will be okay. If they dump you for it. You'll find someone who is into things you are into. Also. You don't have to be polite to someone who makes you feel uncomfortable. How to handle uncomfortable advances and what to do if they don't feel safe. Seems like many women think they should tolerate unwanted attention and should take it as a compliment. Or shouldn't hurt a guy's feelings and so play along. Girls need actually strategies. Not just vague empowering statements. It's especially vital for preteen and teen girls who are suddenly getting male attention and don't have any experience or strong guidance in how to handle it. Especially since the attention is often from older men or adults, often guys who are predators and know a girl their age is naive and pliable, and they may have no experience standing up for themselves to an adult. They also need to know who they can go to or call if they're feeling threatened or they find themselves in a dangerous situation. 
since many kids are too embarrassed to go to their parents. Here's a good one. If you don't want to have children for whatever reason you do not have to. You are not broken or less of a woman because of it. It's better to regret not having a kid than to regret having one. You don't have to even follow the life script. You don't have to go to college. You don't have to get married and you don't have to have children. If you aren't happy alone. You won't be happy with someone else. Don't wait for a knight in shining armor to come save you from all of your problems. Educate yourself. Focus on building a successful career and strong friendships with like-minded women. And then find a man or woman who is doing the same. Don't douche. It will give you a yeast infection. Make it easier to get steez and make your vag smell weird. The grain in your garden could be growing in several different directions. Change the angle of your stroke accordingly to avoid ingrown hairs. I was really confused because I thought you were talking about like. Actual gardening skills at first. I guess this is for straight women only. But everyone will try to make you compete with other women for men. They will tell you that to make yourself look better. You have to make another woman look worse. They will tell you you need to be all things to all men. There are not a finite supply of men in the world. There isn't even a finite supply of good men in the world. You're going to be much happier seeing other women as your teammates. Not your enemies. Just because he's complaining about blue balls it doesn't mean you have to do anything about it unless you truly want to. If he continues whining and trying to pressure you into helping him out. Then he's a tool and it's time to lose his number. But babe. It really hurts. You know damn well how to solve that problem on your own. I've dated way too many assholes and there's so much more than this. But other redditors pretty much covered it all. Use sunscreen. All. The. Time. Use it all over your body that is exposed to the sun. Make sure you get your face. Neck. And upper chest really well. Every single day. Never leave the house without it and in 15 to 20 years you will know why. Always drink lots of water. You will look better. Feel better. And there are so many health benefits for this. Don't over pluck your eyebrows. There will come a time that you will wish that you had more eyebrows. You're gonna survive. And good things are gonna start to happen again. And one day you may even look back and even this will not be such a bad thing. Breakups are not the end of the world. There will be plenty of other boys and you don't have to stay with one if you're unhappy. Boys aren't what you're alive for. Antibiotics can make birth control pills less effective. That's how I wound up with a little sister and later. A nephew. That you can be smart. Strong and feminine all at the same time. Don't limit yourself to please other people. Wash your butthole. That it's okay to be feminine and want to be beautiful. Beauty isn't always about attracting a mate. There's nothing inherently wrong with pink or makeup or wanting to be pretty. It doesn't make you any less of a feminist to enjoy any of that. Emsturbation is normal and women do it too. Men aren't the only ones who can be exist. Women discriminate against other women too. That discharge is normal and is an important clue to your cycle and reproductive health. How to cook. Clean. Change a tire. Do basic home repairs. Basically anything any human should know. Male or female. How not to base self worth on other people. How to treat other women as allies and recognize a toxic friend. Girls and young women should learn about the life of important women in history. Cleopatra. Margaret Thatcher. Marie Antoinette. Marie Curie. Frida Kahlo. Marilyn Monroe. Jackie O. And many others. The more varied and different their biographies are. The better. That would teach these girls that there's no right or wrong way to be a woman. You can be whoever you want. You still can be yourself and leave an important mark in this world. Man. Kind of a bummer that so many of the top comments have to do with being comfortable saying no. That lifting weights is not only cool but essential to stay healthy and strong. Girls are taught to be weak and to stay weak. 
This is so wrong. I wish all girls were taught strength and weightlifting from school upwards. To not be so envious or judgmental towards other women. We all can be best fiends and get drunk on wine if you all stop hating on each other. When to use a tampon when you're on your period. I mean yeah. When you're a freshly bled little fish in a screaming. Estrogen filled pond full of chocolate. B list rom coms and mood swings. You assume that the best time to use one is when you've just come on. Makes sense. Right? Wrong. You put that absorbent agent of hormonal hell up your jacksy at the first sign of blood. You're gonna have a bad time. Ever had a cat lick you? You know that bobbed? Rasping. This is far too much friction sensation of its tongue passing across your skin. Imagine that. Internally. And magnify it by 10. That gets somewhat close to how it feels to insert a tampon dry. And don't even get me started about removing them dry. How to please themselves s so early. No is a complete sentence. You do not need to justify. Argue. Or defend your refusal to do something. Money. How to manage it. Invest it. Save it. When negotiating for a job. Ask for pay in the top end of the range. Don't undervalue your time or talents. Ask for a raise. Wanting to have your own money doesn't make you greedy. It makes you smart. If a guy is threatened because you make more money than him or have a better degree. Run. You can't fix his insecurities by making yourself smaller. Do your own taxes, or have your accountant walk you through it. Balance your own checkbook and pay your bills. Learn about the tax advantages of owning your own home or saving for retirement. Just don't be afraid of money. It is a necessity if you want to be a functional adult.